Hey guys, welcome back to RIP Superchargers and thanks for stopping by. If you're stopping by, you're probably looking for a little bit more power for your Toyota Tacoma. And that's great because that's what we do here at RIP Superchargers. No, we're not doing superchargers just yet, but we are doing an ignition program that's a pretty big deal. Um, what you just saw is basically a stock uh, fourth gen Toyota Tacoma automatic, make a dyno pass and basically make the stock power that it makes. Now, it is completely stock on the engine side. It has a stock air box, a stock exhaust system, but it does have mathematically a 33-inch tire on it, so it's a little bit larger tire. That tire uh, did take a little bit of power away, but that's okay because we're doing a one-to-one -one test here. But let me show you a little bit about this product so that you can understand it. RIP has a line of ignition products that uh, goes through 2007, from 2007 to 2020 for our Jeep V6s, the Pentastar and the 3.8 liter. And it's very, very popular. You can, I urge you to go to the website and read some of the reviews. They're very positive. And uh, you can take a look at what we're capable of doing there in terms of horsepower, MPG, and just overall feel on the vehicle. Uh, we'll be sure you'll be impressed there. But right here is a stock uh, ignition coil for the 3.5 liter variable compression engine in the Tacoma. Okay, and here in 2018 is our first prototype that was actually going to go to market, which is why it's the right color. Um, and if you were to zoom in on this, you would basically see that this is about 10. It's larger. It's it's larger than the OEM. It's taller, and we were able to squeeze 10 percent more power out of that. But on the dyno, it didn't really translate as the hit that we wanted. We, we knew that we can make more, so we went back to the drawing board, and that's when we came up with this bad boy. And you could see there's a tremendous difference between the two. Um, in terms of the coil itself, in terms of size, there's a lot more energy going through this. As a matter of fact, it's 44 percent more powerful than the OE. And this is translating to some power. As a matter of fact, that uh, Forerunner video, we made 15 horsepower there at the rear wheel with just one mod in the same day with the same fuel, everything. And we're looking to do that here as well. So the premise here is that we're going to show you the naturally aspirated pass, as we've done. We're going to take a minute to install these, uh, these coils in this vehicle and do, again, a one-to-one -one test. And we'll reconvene it to dyno and show you the power gains. And hopefully that'll generate a little bit of uh, enthusiasm in you guys. And you might buy something, too. Well, I'll be right back. All right, so that was a lot of fun, and I'm really liking what it is that we got here. So we took some time, and we did install uh, those coils. It took about 45 minutes, and we also took some time to do some instructions because, you know, you want to take the most use of your time here at, uh, at RIP Superchargers. And uh, we were able to make a pass, and we're really excited about what we got. So one thing to note is this vehicle, like I said, is completely stock. So as we mentioned before, stock gearbox, stock exhaust. We do have a larger tire that adds, adds up to be about a 33-inch tire. Uh, and then we added our coil pack. This vehicle is running 87 regular fuel, so that's important as well, uh, so that you know that this vehicle is basically the way you guys drive it down the road. Some of you might use better octane. This client happens to be using 87. He's in the city. He's not often you know, flooring it, although I can't see that not happening with, with a Tacoma because you often have to floor it just to get on the highway and off we go all right so let's uh let's talk about what we have here to my left all right you see two passes here okay 06 represents the stock pass which is basically after we dialed it in on the dyno and made sure that we got a good average we made about 237.4 uh, horsepower at the rear wheel right that's rear world World, world horsepower. So that means that's the horsepower that you actually drive. And we cover this a lot on videos. So that means that's the drivetrain loss, that's the engine, and the drivetrain loss equated to the same. And that's exactly what you're driving down, down the road. And now you're seeing this 254.7, which represents the one mod that we did. So it's the same day on the same vehicle with the same fuel, no variables whatsoever, which we love to do because that really sort of transiates to what you're looking for. And this is what we got. Now it took a little bit of time for us to get it, you know, get it right because it is 87 octane fuel and there is moments of detonation and that basically represents itself right here. So we want to get a one-on-one -on -one pass. When you first step on the gas on this vehicle, you probably are getting some detonation and there, there are some adaptive natures of this PCM as well that needed to learn. So we made some passes and at pass 14 we got one that was dead nuts on and wanted to show exactly what type of gain. 
Now remember, we had no control of the PCM, we have no control of anything else except for the fact that we ramp it on and you know, off we go. This now is being done at uh, just over 3,000 transmission lockup. So we started exactly the same and you could see there's immediate gain with our blue line here. So our torque always has more torque off, you know, from, the, from right off the start, and then through the RPM, as your cam and your VVTI and all that stuff works, you could see that all that extra spark is fattening up the torque curve, blue being the modified and red being the stock. And we never, ever look back. You know, as a matter of fact, we're above it the entire way. So we're at 250, just under 250 pounds of torque, as opposed to where we were before, which is 20 pounds less. Okay, so that's, that's a big jump when you're towing something or you've got you know, your family stacked in, your, in, in, in here. Now, when you look at the horsepower, which is the solid line, you could see we immediately start with more horsepower above the entire thing. And you could see this little wave here. That's where I bet if I were logging, we probably had a couple of points of knock and there was an adjustment. If this had the proper fuel in it with this modification, we probably would be rounder here. Like we did in the Forerunner, it's a lot fatter down low and that octane comes into, comes into play there. We weren't monitoring O2 here. Again, we were one mod. We probably should have put O2 in here for extra information, but we didn't on this one. Maybe we'll do it on the next one. So, uh, as you can see, the blue line is above the red uh, at all times, but really, when that cam starts to open, you can see us taking advantage of all that fuel, and it really fattens up quite a bit. So we got 17, almost 18 horsepower gain with one mod on 87, inch, on 87 octane fuel on a 33 inch tire, so that's a great gain. So uh, remember guys, the engine is a variable compression engine. That Atkinson cycle is playing with us a little bit. And the idea that we had here is because you're playing with some of this combustion cycle, and you can look it up, there's some great videos you know, online about how this engine works and why you have such a wonky power band when you're trying to ask for power. It's because it's actually trying to get really good gas mileage and also you know, solidify that power as well. Uh, so it, what it does is it kind of holds back some of the exhaust fumes and it uses it to sort of create more silicone under pressure, and that's where we thought if we can make a lot more spark, we take advantage of all those fumes and that unburnt fuel along with the clean air that's coming in during that variable compression cycle, and boom, and there we are. And clearly, if you have the weakest fuel you can buy, you know, around here at 87 octane, and we're making nearly 20 horsepower, imagine if this client adds a cold air system which lets more air in, and then an exhaust system which would let more air out, and then finally goes for a, a tune of some sort, you know, you can gain upwards of, of, of 30 horsepower pretty easily because you've got all that spark there to be able to deliver you know, a, a cleaner burn during those cycles. So uh, we're pretty excited about this product. I think you guys will too. I think we demonstrated it very well here where you can see that there's actual gains both in the four liter and the 3.5. The next one we're gonna do is probably this white one behind me, which again has been our long-term tester and done just about 10,000 miles worth of driving for us. Uh, and it's got the smaller tires, factory tires on it. So we may be able to get a couple of more ponies out of that, you know, at the tail end. I mean, will it matter? I guess for people who have stock tires, they wanna know, you know, and they don't have the 33s, they're probably gonna wanna know. Um, but, you know, we're curious to see what it does. I mean, we already know, but you know, we're going to show you on video. All right, so uh, you have questions, uh, please, in the comments. We're very interactive with that. Please subscribe and like. You know, you're new to the channel, Toyota guys, please. We'd love to see uh, that you're, you're interacting with us. And if you have any questions, you can always email us or Facebooks or the Instagrams or any of those things there. You can always just give us a call. Well, thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one.